Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers. May I here with Heartwood Art, and today we're going to do part two of this circle cutting jig for your trim router. Now, in part one, we talked about the materials list, a little bit of stuff that you're going to need for it, bare minimum tools and whatever, and then how to make most of this prototype. But here, we're going to talk about in part two how to make these holes for mounting this thing. And there are definitely tips and tricks to this that are going to save you from wasting out the wood you just made here. So let's dive in. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Come over and visit me at heartwoodart.com. All right, let's get going. The first thing you'll need to do is remove the trim router base. And here's a tip, get a container for those screws. Now once the screws are out, remove the base and place it upside down on the jig wood and square it as much as possible. Then mark the holes for the screws. Now besides a pencil, you can also use a nail to scratch the center point. Then remove the router base, and you can use a center punch or nail to indent the very center of the holes to make it easier to align your drill bit. Now I did this part on my drill press. If you're hand drilling, stay as perpendicular as you can, and choose your drill bit size carefully. Because these are machine screws, you'll want to hold the same size as the screw. Now you can also use the base of the router to check for hole size. I think my router is using a metric screw as a 532nd bit was a bit too small and the next size up was a bit too big. I elected it to go a little bit smaller. So drill your four holes and be as precise as you can be. Okay, for this next part, it's super important to be sure that you flip the jig board over to drill the countersinks on the back side. And it's super important for the screw heads to be below flush with the bottom of the jig. Now, if you're using one quarter inch plywood for the jig, you really can't drill too far down before going all the way through. And you can use your router base to help determine the size of the countersink bit. Mine was 21 64 inches. Be sure the bit is wider than the head of the screw so that it can fit all the way in. Just go slow and check depth often. And when you resume going deeper, it will only throw out a little bit of dust at a time because you're not taking much off. So just keep going slow until you get it. Okay, now it's time to mount the router. Be careful of orientation and ensure the front of the router is facing the top of the jig. And then stand your router on end. Line up your screw holes with the router. Now, if any are off, you may be able to simply widen one of the holes a bit by angling a drill bit in it, or maybe use an X-Acto knife to shave a little of the hole on one side. Be sure to get all four screws started before tightening any of them down. And don't over-tighten. There really aren't many plies of wood left at the bottom of that countersink. You don't want to over-tighten the screws and break through. And when you've got them all in, ensure that all four screw heads are below the plane of the wood. Okay, the last test of your mount is to ensure that the router bit is still centered in the hole that you drilled for it. If it's not, then you can turn on the router for a moment to chew away any wood touching. Just know that if it's way off, your slot for the center point of your circle will be off too and may no longer be centered with the bit. Okay, that's it for part two. In part three of this series, we'll mount our jig to a scrap piece of plywood and do a test cut for our first circle. 